Hi, my name is Kate Wolf, and this is The Watchful Citizen, sponsored by the Lancaster County Democratic Party. I'm joined today by City Councilman Jean Carroll. Jean was elected to the City Council at large in 2009 and will be on the May 7th ballot seeking re-election. Thanks for being here, Jean. Well, thank you for asking me. I'm glad to have you spend time talking about the City of Lincoln. Congratulations on your endorsement by the Lincoln Journal Star. Yes, uh, very important for my campaign, and it's, uh, I think, uh, a good view of what I've done for the city for the last four years. That's great. Why don't you start out by telling us a little bit about you, about growing up in Lincoln, and about your family. Sure. Uh, born and raised in the city of Lincoln uh, for 62 years I've been here. And uh, went to school and, and grew up on the north side of Lincoln. Uh, went to Sacred Heart, an old school over there, and uh, Pius, and then on to the University of Nebraska. Uh, married, uh, been married 39 years in May. Three kids and two grandkids. So. Uh, a lot of good roots here in the city of Lincoln, and, and I really enjoyed going to school, getting an education, and then starting a family business and growing that business into a, a pretty good uh, venture here in the city of Lincoln, and then moved on to other, other things, but always loved the city of Lincoln. That's great. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience on the city council? Well, four years uh, have been gone by quickly. Uh, I think what really helped me with the start of uh, the city council was six years on the planning commission. I learned a lot about the city of Lincoln and how it grows and how it functions. So that's helped me in the, in the last four years on the city council. I've been involved with probably m most of the major projects that have gone on in the city of Lincoln. First being the, the West Haymarket uh, JPA and the Pinnacle Bank Arena. I'm on that board and have been vital to that uh, project as it's gone through the construction phases and we're almost done. So that's, a, that's an important uh, asset for the city of Lincoln and in, in future. Any road projects around the city of Lincoln I've been involved with, major, major uh, changes in the city landscape. Uh, a big one for the downtown is the Peach, P Street Corridor. I, was, uh, I initiated that project with the city of Lincoln through the Downtown Lincoln Association, and now it's going to come through uh, and finish in this summer. Uh, the Civic Plaza is online to be built this summer. Another great place for the, for the people who enjoy the downtown Lincoln. So many projects across the city of Lincoln I've worked on over the four years. Uh, and another project that, that I was uh, helpful on was 21st and N, where we were taking a parks department uh, warehouse area, turning it over to the private sector, uh, allowing them to build over 65 uh, family-owned units, um, creating housing in the middle of the city, $36 million investment that's on the tax rolls. Those are the important things I've been doing for the city of Lincoln. That's great. Um, back to a little bit about your work experience. I know uh, an important development that you had a significant role in that my family appreciates is over near Peter Pan Park. Can you talk a little bit about what you guys, what you did um, in that part of our city? Sure, and Peter Pan Park is kind of close to my heart because back when I went to Sacred Heart, which is very, very close to there, I went there and played baseball, played football, and spent a lot of time in that park. So years later, when there was a property available about 10 years ago, right next to the park, which was an old warehouse area, railroad tracks, an industrial site. I purchased it and over time removed or demolished all the old warehouses and built a new housing subdivision there. So today, next to that park, you have a beautiful new houses, families living in there, uh, just exciting place to be in the middle of the city of Lincoln. A good example of what you can do if you work together with the city to provide a quality living place for families. And I think that's a, that's a sign of what I do in this city. I buy properties that uh, should be demolished and move on to new and, and better projects that enhance the city of Lincoln. That's great. I've heard you talk about attributing the success of the growth in Lincoln to public and private partnerships. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, a good example there again is the arena where you have the 2015 private group uh, starting the initiative to say we need to build something and we need to improve on something in the city of Lincoln. And then s the city of Lincoln itself, uh, Mayor Beitler and the city council working together to find the ways to get that done, creating the JPA, the Joint Public Agency with the University of Nebraska, finding funding, and there it shows that with all that hard work now comes the, the Pinnacle Bank Arena out of the ground, ready to be a great asset for the city of Lincoln. That's great. Um, I've also heard you say that you feel that Lincoln is better off than it was four years ago, and that's a good cornerstone of your campaign. Can you talk about that, where Lincoln was four years ago, where we are today? Absolutely. From, from the city council standpoint, uh, you had a council that just didn't get along, uh, a lot of infighting, 
And I think that in the last four years, we've turned that ship around and we're, we're heading in the right direction because we get to get, we work together. And you talk about what has happened in the city of Lincoln as far as unemployment is concerned. One of the lowest unemployment rates in the city of Lincoln, or in the sta United States. Uh, we have more employed persons living in the city of Lincoln than ever before. You talk about new businesses that have come here. We have over $2 billion of commercial construction in the last four years in the city of Lincoln, which means businesses are building on, improving, and coming to the city of Lincoln. Uh, jobs are, are a high priority of mine, and you can see by all the unemployment rates and other jobs and businesses coming here, that's, that's been a success as, as far as I'm concerned. One of the other things is housing. When, when I took over four years ago on the city council, housing was in tough shape in the city of Lincoln as far as new housing, housing prices, housing values. Today, values are up, property values are up. We have the most uh, uh, new housing starts in the last six years. It just happened. Uh, we have right now what's a, called a seller's market because people are selling their houses for a listing price. So things have turned, out, turned around 180 degrees as far as housing. And that's all due to what the city council and the mayor have done in the last four years to improve the city of Lincoln. That's great. I also know that you talk a lot about saving parks, pools, libraries, and cuts in um, public safety with firefighters and police officers as a part of the decisions that were made in the 2011 budget. You want to tell us a little bit about kind of what was on the table at that time and the decisions that you faced as sure. a council? Sure. And, and 2011 was a very difficult time for the city of Lincoln as far as budget is concerned. We had a $9.5 million deficit caused by a lot of things. Uh, one of the things that the legislature and the governor took away over $3.5 million from the city of Lincoln at the last second. So there's tough decisions to be made. And on the chopping block were fire stations where they, we, we were looking at closing a fire station in northwest Lincoln. Uh, uh, laying off police officers off the streets. So closing libraries, pools, uh, parks, trails. We were, we were considering what to do with that big de budget deficit, but we went and listened to the people. We had a lot of uh, public meetings with, us, with the public to see what do they want, what do they want to keep, what's important, and their priorities I think are the same as mine. Uh, public safety, police officers, fire, firefighters, uh, parks and pools, uh, libraries. So that's, I made the decision along with the other council members to say we need to increase property taxes, or increase our brand new revenues just to make sure those policies stay open. And that's what happened. And I think, you know, two years later after we made that decision, the city of Lincoln's better off for it. I think you're right. Um, any last word for the voters for the upcoming May election? Well, I think that you have a, a, a complete different vision between myself, the Democrats, and the Republicans in, in this election. I think that for me it's the vision of moving forward like we've done in the last four years to make sure we keep the priorities of, of economic development, public safety, infrastructure, making sure that we can complete finishing the roads and resurfacing and, and reusing their roads in the best manner. And I think those that, that's the vision I have versus the other candidates. Some of those have a vision of cutting taxes, but then also they're cutting programs. They're closing fire stations. They're laying off police officers. They're not repairing the streets that need to be repaired that we have in the city of Lincoln. The city of Lincoln went up and the city council over the last four years has repaired more city streets than, than in the last decade. So that's the priorities that I think are important for the city of Lincoln. That's where we need to continue to focus our, our strengths on. And if reelected, I'm gonna do that for the city of Lincoln. That's great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Just want to give everybody a few final reminders. The last day to register to vote in person at the Election Commission is April 26th. The last day to request an absentee ballot to be mailed to you is on May 1st. And you can always vote early in person at the Election Commission until May 6th. And of course, the polls will be open on May 7th from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. If you're in need of a ride to the polls or to have a ballot delivered to you on election day, if you have any other questions, you can contact the Lancaster County Democratic Party at 402-476-2268. Thanks so much, Gene, and best of luck. Thank you, Kate.